Have you ever wished you could get advice from an MD who is the expert on all things autoimmune? Well, today is your chance. Dr. Maggie is holding office hours <laughs> and nothing is off the table. You know, typically we have a topic that we talk about on autoimmune table talk that's dictated by either you, the audience, or by us, right? But this time today, we're going to have the table turn around on us, which means that you guys, you and the audience get to dictate um, the narrative the, by your questions. So many of you have already submitted questions and many of you will be submitting questions as we go into this live. I can't wait. Let's dig in. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us for a special Autoimmune Table Talk Live tonight. It is Ask the Expert. Ask her anything. Office hours are open. <laughs> She's an expert. I'm Anna Manuel alongside our Dr. Maggie. What's going on, Dr. Maggie? I'm, thank you. Thank you, Anne. I'm Maggie UMD, functional and holistic medicine physician and creative transform and a transform protocol to turn around any autoimmune issue around naturally. And today what's going on is you guys get to ask me anything. We have a whole hour of open office hours. So many of you have already submitted questions and I want all of you right now in the audience start putting in questions. Why? A couple things. Number one, you get entered into a drawing for a $50 gift card to the MYMD supplement store. Number one, every question that you submit. Number two, we have an army of alumni student teachers ready in the comment section to actually respond and answer your questions. They're helping us out. So you not only get my answers to this, but there's going to be a lot of questions that we may miss or that I might be answering as well that our alumni will be chiming in. So you have a team that's going to be answering questions today. So it is going to be fun. But those <laughs> It's already lighting up, actually. You said submit the questions. Oh, my gosh. Are they already submitting questions? So Yes, we already have several coming in, and I know we have a long list pre-submitted. So <laughs> I love that. And we want to do this kind of rapid fire today, right? Today's rapid fire. Like, I want to get through as many questions as I possibly can. So uh, this, I'm taking this no holds bar very seriously. And you know I don't ride shotgun. I'm going to go fast. All right. <laughs> with the driver's seat with the gas all the way down. If you have not joined our Facebook group, uh, click the link above or below the copy of this video to join our Facebook group, Transform Autoimmune Disease Naturally. We are inching our way to 60,000 members in this community, and that is going to be the biggest Facebook group on the planet for autoimmunity. So I'm super excited. Um, we're going to have a 60,000 celebration coming up, I believe, sometime within the next 60 days. Let's make it sooner. Uh, and for those of you that are watching on YouTube, give us a thumbs up, give us a subscribe. So, and get notified every time we come on live. Okay. Okay. We have so much to get through. Uh, would you like to get started? Let's get started, everybody. Let's get rapid fire started. Okay. And alumni, all of you alumni out there, get ready. When you guys are already seeing questions out there, feel free to start answering it. And if you're an alumni student teacher and you answer a question, put a hashtag alumni so that you can identify yourself as one of our alumni. That'll be great. All right. We're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, let's start with one of our pre-submitted questions first, Dr. Maggie. And Nikki asked, what if I haven't officially been diagnosed yet? I feel okay. almost certain that I have MS. I do have Graves' disease already. I okay. have so many scary symptoms, but doctors don't take me seriously. Okay, so this is a very common question we get. I think it's so interesting. Um, is this, this was uh, Nikki that submitted the question. So Nikki, here's the thing. Uh, a lot of people say, what if I haven't been officially diagnosed yet? I have a whole video on why di diagnosis doesn't matter. Please, please, please watch why diagnosis doesn't matter. Um, here's uh, who, if you want the training on why diagnosis doesn't matter, type in chat and we will get that to you. Check your message request later. But here's the thing. She already knows she has Graves. That's already one autoimmune disease. So we already know her immune system is mistaken. One part of body has a germ. What's the likelihood it's going to mistake hundreds of other body parts as a germ? 100%. Nobody with a diagnosis of autoimmune disease just have one autoimmune target of attack. We have hundreds, okay? So if you don't stop the root cause of that autoimmune attack, you're just a sitting duck waiting for more and more and more diagnosis. So right now, I already have three to four diagnosis, and I stopped at that. OK, on your watch, my watch, I tell people, don't you get another diagnosis? Let's prevent that from happening. So diagnosis does not matter. What you want to do is stop what's fueling the autoimmune attack so you don't have any new diagnosis and you can actually deal with and, and turn around your current diagnosis. Kabish? 
Capiche, just want to say alumni army also chiming in, trying to answer that as well, saying, yep, doesn't matter what the diagnosis is. Fundamentals and the root cause is what matters. I would love it. I know what I love is any alumni that doesn't have a diagnosis. I remember Cassandra. Okay. Like recently, um, Cassandra is in our program and Cassandra uh, didn't have a diagnosis. Right. And yet that didn't stop her. I mean, she had chronic fatigue. She had all this joint pain, all these symptoms. Her mom was like begging Cassandra, please do something. Join the program. (laughs) Mama Cassandra was like, but Cassandra recently was dancing on a cruise. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it was like a theme party and she was like a rapper holding a ghetto blaster and her cousin was like who that you know and I'm like so Cassandra's point was I didn't need a diagnosis to know I needed to get better even my mom was telling me and kicking me in the booty and saying you need to do something and turn this around so I love the fact that there's tons of alumni here if you're an alumni you don't have a diagnosis please share oh wow. there's Cassandra <laughs> I love that. She looks very happy. I think she was talking about the cruise right there where she was had the ghetto blaster on her. And she said she had gold chains and everything. Um, If you guys want to watch Cassandra's interview where she had no diagnosis and see her outcomes, uh, write Cassandra's interview down in chat. We can get that to you. But if you're an alumni who don't have a diagnosis, please tell people what you were able to turn around. Let's let's talk about that. That'll be really great. Next question. That and would love to hear it from anybody else struggling with symptoms, but who doesn't have a diagnosis. Exactly. If you don't have a diagnosis, but you have a slew of symptoms, type it in chat right now. If you want to ask a question about it, do it now. And let us know. All right. Next question. Is fixing SIBO the first step in healing Hashimoto's? No, no. And hell no. This is from Deborah. <laughs> Deborah, thank you for this question. Uh, great question. I actually did a training around uh, the role of infection, chronic infections like the SIBO, Lyme, um, uh, Epstein Barr, even the Big C. Um, there's a role in these in triggering and worsening autoimmunity. But the problem is, is that in actual functional medicine, naturopath training, they deal with this first. And for me, that is a big problem. You got to deal with the root cause that's causing the environment with which these infections come in establish and trigger autoimmune disease. So, so much of autoimmunity, then you get this infection, you've been working with this doctor to try to clear that infection. But then the fact of the matter is these infections come back over and over and again, and they become chronic. Why? Because nothing has been done to change the underlying environment. So for me, I look at the five pillars of our program. It is a root cause approach that's anti-infection already. And the, and, but you have to do everything in those pillars to get the environment not conducive to those infections to stay. So, so many people in our program, by the end of the program, have already cleared a lot of these infections are no longer dealing with the results of these infections. And more importantly, they've dealt with the autoimmune cascade that the infection has triggered, that it no longer is a problem. So I think it's really important that order really matters. Order absolutely matters. I thank you for that. And order absolutely matters because you don't deal with infection first and autoimmunity next or last. You deal with the autoimmunity first Mm. and then infection later, if it's even needed at that point, order absolutely matters. And your alumni echoing, echoing everything you're saying, Margaret, infection is not the first step. Someone else says have to address Godzilla, Barbara, five pillar approach. And (laughs) people are saying you can also start with water, water, water is a good way to do it. Listen, if you had questions about infection, please let us know, type it in the chat and the team will definitely get with you to learn more about the five pillars. Hey, okay. I, have a, I have a question in chat that I think is pretty cool. Cynthia G says, what's the difference between food mapping and diagnosed food intolerances? Ooh. Ooh, totally night and day. Okay. So here's the deal. Food mapping is completely different because I created it. Mm-hmm. I created it. It's an entirely unique process. And we have a whole training. Well, we have tens of trainings around the difference between food mapping and food sensitivity. And the truth of the matter is most, if not all food sensitivity testing out there suck, first of all. Um, So that's one problem. Secondly, providers aren't trained to understand these results properly because why? People with autoimmune disease have tons, our immune system is very triggered. So we have tons of false positive and false negative. So let's say you even did the best, most wonderful test, but if your provider is not an expert in autoimmunity and what the false positives and negatives are in people with autoimmune disease, they're going to give you the wrong results. And so I see so many people who get food sensitivity testing with incredibly poor to little, no outcome, or it have, it may have made their situation worse. Hmm. So I'm interested in how many people in the alumni 
before our program had food sensitivity testing that was not accurate. Mm -hmm. And in fact, went through food mapping and had those become life changing results. So yeah, when people tell us sometimes, oh, we, I've done food mapping before. And I said, no, you can't because I created it. Right. Yep. Okay. So it is. A, and, and here's the thing. It's not just a we use blood tests to test for the foods, food uh, uh, that are triggering the autoimmunity, but it's way more than that. Our mm -hmm. food mapping process involves a whole lot of work and teaching about digestion. A lot of people think it's food sensitivity when it's digestion. That's a big issue. Histamine issues related with poor digestion. So there's digestion. There's also a lot of people think they're going to be removing a ton of food. And the truth is with our food mapping, people are in, most people, 95% of people in our program is reintroducing and adding back a ton of food and bringing back joy in their lives. And on top of this, there's a functional nutritionist in our program who's actually helping them implement this and also reintroduce back a whole lot of food. So food mapping is an entire process in our program. FYI, big difference night and day. Nobody else on the planet is doing food mapping because I created it. Important to remember. And listen, while we're talking about food, let's let's answer a couple other questions that were submitted just now, okay. uh, just about food. Um, Carrie says, how can I introduce eggs back into my diet? Well, it really depends on your results. Okay. So it really depends on your results. It may or may not be reintroducible based on your data. This is why data absolutely matters. Okay. So in our food mapping process, I can tell if that egg was real or not. No more guessing. How about that? If it was a real positive result, you're saying. Yeah, because eggs can frequently be a false positive result. And I actually teach people in our program through food mapping how to tell the difference between a false positive and a real positive. So that's the difference. There's no way anybody can tell you that unless they actually understand this whole process behind food mapping of getting the right testing done, having the right mentorship, and having been taught what's real positive, what's false positive, what's false negatives. Mm -hmm. That's key. If someone tells you that they can tell you otherwise, they're lying. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Plain and simple. And yeah. just more, uh, Margaret wants to know, Hey, how many veggies should a seven-year-old child eat? So when talking about children, yeah. are there limits to the amounts that they should be eating? As much as they want, as mm -hmm. much as you can get into them. Because uh, Margaret knows as she's an alumni in our program is that she's asking this question. I know because in our program, eating a ton of cruciferous vegetables for hormone balance is really key. And so as the example for her family, she's now saying how much should my seven-year-old eat? I think to me, I still would love a seven-year-old to eat at least one and a half to two cups a day of leafy green vegetables and cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous are going to be super helpful for hormone balance, even for a little kid. Okay. Just so you guys know. So yeah, at least one and a half to two cups a day for a seven-year-old and you can't OD on it. They can do more. If you can get more in a seven-year-old, more power to you, lady. As much nourishment as possible. And yeah. just alumni comments. I thought I couldn't have a lot of food when it was only onion. I know, Miss Crones. <laughs> so, <right? laughs> there she is again. And uh, somebody else saying, I'm so glad I now understand how to read my food mapping results. If I hadn't gone through the program, I would be avoiding more foods than I need to. So, well, well and that's a really yeah. good point. And so many people are so sick. They come in even sicker than their autoimmunity and they come in even sicker than their autoimmunity. And the reason is they're so nutrient depleted. No one's worked on their digestion. They're avoiding so many foods that has nothing to do with really what they need to avoid. So most of the time people are reintroducing a lot of stuff and I'm a foodie. A functional nutritionist is a nudie. It's a, <laughs> it's a foodie. <laughs> Who's going to kill me? It's a foodie as well. So most of the time, we're actually sitting there talking to people about how to fall back in love with food again after all the food trauma. Right. Air fried kale chips. Great way to get lots of veggies in. We're getting I tips know. from alumni. And I love that. People, love are having, alumni. people are having fun with uh, the nudie comment as well. <laughs> <laughs> Allie, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, let's go back to a pre-submitted question now. Amy S. asking about supplements. What supplements help with brain fog? That's a really great question. So let's talk about brain fog for one second. Um, I'd like to switch out that banner, um, Stacia. Um, what, uh, what supplements help with brain fog? Most of the brain fog that we see in men, women, and men and women, believe it or not, is related with hormone imbalances. So I've talked about brain fog in multiple videos and hormone training. So if you're interested in more information about hormones and brain fog, type it in chat right now and our team can get back to you later today. Make sure to check your message request for that. But my number, I think there's two supplements that I would really recommend. Um, number one is going to be Love Her. 
Uh, Love Her is to me the best number one supplement that men and women can take to help with any hormone pattern. I would say universally, no matter what the pattern is that we have, um, Love Her actually help balances out um, every single pattern. And whether you're man or woman, or whether it's your teenager who's having horrible periods, um, it is a great starter supplement. So Love Her is L-O-B, uh, there it is, Love Her is there. And the ingredients are specifically made to actually help with not only with hormone balance, but one of the most common symptoms is brain fog. So I typically, um, and I, I, I'm taking Love Her. It, w- it would be two a day and you can take it anytime. Super helpful. The second uh, supplement I would recommend would be Pro Omega 1000. People don't realize how important having high amount. I'm talking the, the amount that's in studies shown that auto pe- autoimmune people need. Uh, Pro Omega 1000 specifically is formulated for autoimmune issues. People cannot absorb um, very well with autoimmune. So there's a lot of fish oil that the quality just isn't there. Absorption could be an issue um, and uh, pesticide is an issue. So when you're talking the high doses we're talking about with autoimmunity, we're talking about three to 4,000 milligrams a day. So Pro Omega 1000 is really incredible because high amounts of omega 3s is really helpful as an anti neuroinflammation um, properties. And it crosses the, it can cross um, the gut, um, blood barrier and also blood brain barrier. Um, uh, pro omega 1000. I typically take three a day, one in the morning, two at night, right? That's what I do with that. The other thing that uh, is a fat that crosses the blood brain barrier is our pro MCT, which is in our GI essentials, uh, MCT, especially C8 part of MCT oil crosses the blood brain barrier. It's like a rocket fuel for your brain. That's a kick ass for your brain farm. So those are the three things that I would recommend. Well, and on that note, someone submitted this question about supplements. Which ones do you recommend continuing beyond the program? And then the second question, how many tests included in the food mapping protocol? Yeah, so I don't, I'm, okay, so I think a lot of people misunderstand me for what other people call programs. Mm -hmm. People think that our program is a supplement program, which is a lot of people out there erroneously call themselves a program. What they're doing is just selling very expensive subscriptions of, of supplements for life, never fixing these root cause problems. That's the opposite of what I do. I honestly, if I do my job right, I tell my alumni, you should 100%, if there's any supplement that you take, it should be number one, data-driven. Number two, you're getting incredible results with it because you understand why you need it from your root cause standpoint. So either it's really based on your data or because you have incredible results with it, understanding your own autoimmune issues. So for me, my job, if I do it right, you're not going to be on like some huge continuing recommendation of this giant boatload of supplements. That's just not who I am. I have mixed connective tissue disorder. I don't like, it's not easy for me to swallow supplements. So if I take supplements, it's something that's very, that's going to be based on my data and based on results. Like for me, I know my digestion shock sucks. So, you know, I'm going to be using digestive for life because guess what? 90% of people with autoimmune disease have digestion problems. So therefore, Digested is one of those things that was a game changer for me. So I take digested one with in the um, one with small meals and two with big meals, and that's something for me that's maintenance because I know ninety percent of people with autoimmunity have digestion issues, and by my symptom relief of all that bloating, I know I need it for life. But that's pretty rare, you know. Most all the any other supplement I take is because it's based on my data. So I would say, Kristen, um, Christine, is that if you were to start with autoimmune essentials, autoimmune essentials in the store is what are some of the basic requirements for people with autoimmunity? And that would be like vitamin D. That would be like uh, pro omega 1000, the fish oil that I talked about, a probiotic, maybe a digestive, um, digestive, which is digestive enzyme. Those are some of the couple things that I think are really crucial. Um, also like high dose curcumin. So if you're not already taking high dose curcumin in the store as a curcumin, that would be something that's good. Although many people in our program, they either get it through curcumin that we, curcu plus that we have in the store, or they get it through golden balance to drink every night, which most people in our program do because it helps balance hormones and blood sugar every night. Speaking of brain fog. So golden balance is the other way to go that, and that's just a medical food that you use at night if you want to. So nothing is required. I am not a supplement subscription program. This just isn't in my ethical nature. Uh, I am here to fix the root cause. And I tell my people, if I do my job right at the end of this, you're going to learn how to think like me. You're going to address the root causes. So you may not need half or more of those supplements ever again. So most of our alumni are dumping supplements, not adding more and more and more and more. They, they come in with a boatload. 
because who can relate to carrying around things like this, right? <laughs> I've got them right next to me because it's like, yeah, this is the life a lot of people are living prior to your program. Um, mm -hmm. It's just taking so many supplements and yeah. nobody likes that. No one enjoys well, that. Well, and I'm going to ask the alumni too, like, what do you guys think are the crucial supplements that you think for life, like that, that would be important for life, like that you have either based on your data or based on results that you think were really crucial. I'd love to hear from the alumni from them. They could tell you what kind of things they find crucial. Uh, that'd be great. I would love that feedback. Okay. And while we're talking about supplements, somebody did submit another question asking really what would be a great supplement to take uh, when you have inflammation, painful, inflammation. painful pain. Yeah. So we actually have a pain protocol. Uh, anybody who wants the pain protocol type pain protocol in chat. Uh, I have a whole supplement protocol called pain protocol, but here's the thing I, that's, it's not there for you to buy all of it. Don't do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell people that it's just a list of supplements in our store that is used to address pain, but I will tell you inside scoop, what I take, okay, uh, and what I recommend people to start with. The two things that uh, to start with is um, ProMove and SPM Max. The combination of the two is killer for pain. And if you get the pain protocol, you'll understand the difference between what I call flare dosing and what I call um, maintenance for some people who have chronic pain. So um, I love that. So if you want the pain protocol, or actually I would love it, the alumni, if you guys can make recommendations for what worked for you uh, from a supplement standpoint for pain, uh, I would love for you guys to talk about that. And here's the thing. Uh, Wendy said Pro Mega 1000, and there was just somebody else um, that said, Wendy said digested. Nicola said digested. I can tell you right now, proper digestion really helps decrease pain. I know, I'm not going to go into all the ins and outs of why, uh, but I can tell you right now that if you have support your digestion properly, your pain's going to go down, 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 down. Your allergies and histamine levels are going to go down, down, down. So uh, Dara, who's an alumni, says vitamin D, uh, our promethyl B12. Yeah, she has Hashi's. So we're talking about selenium, thyroid protect, and pro omega 1000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are pretty standard for someone with Hashimoto's, but a lot of that's based on her data, especially the D and the B12. So I love that this is data driven as well. And she is actually taking, um, she's actually taking selenium and thyroid protect. Speaking of supplements to protect your thyroid, if mm -hmm. you don't want thyroid cancer and you have low thyroid, uh, selenium and thyroid protect, we have a lot of trainings around thyroid and how, why so many people with thyroid get thyroid cancer and it's completely preventable. So there's trainings around anybody with Hashi's or low thyroid with autoimmune issues. Go ahead and put your comment in chat. We have uh, a lot of trainings around how to um, protect your thyroid. We, we actually have a thyroid checklist. Training. actually, mm -hmm. And we just did a training recently, just a few weeks ago, that would be probably very helpful. And you can hear some uh, very interesting case studies as well. Yeah. Thank you for all these comments, by the way, every question you're submitting is going to enter you into the drawing to, uh, that's the training. um, should you get more thyroid lab testing or should you really understand the root cause and should you prevent the cancer? That's great. If you want, uh, this training, type it in chat and we'll, we'll get it to you. Uh, okay. every question that's submitted right now enters you into a drawing to win a $50 gift card, just so you know. So thank you for all those questions coming yes. in. Everybody. And I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to monitor them and get to as many questions as we can, but so many are coming in that, uh, if we miss your question, we apologize, but somebody on the team will certainly be in touch with you. Let's go back now to a pre-submitted question. Um, this person wants to know, I don't know how to pronounce the name, Kasala, uh, mm -hmm. what is the cost for your program? Okay. That's really an interesting question, right? So here's the thing, no smoke and mirrors. And what I think is really important is I want to do an analogy here. You can spend $60,000, let's say on a Tesla, or you can spend six, you can spend $60,000 on a Tesla or $30,000 on a different car, right? Both are cars, right? But here's the thing is to understand what the value or return on investment is on the Tesla or on the $30,000 car, you have to understand the specifics. Example with the Tesla is, what do you put in as the cost of not ever paying for gas for the rest of the life of that car is? <laughs> what about not having any oil change for the rest of the life of that car? What is the cost of that? And in health, think about what if you never have to go to the emergency room ever again? You don't have to get those surgeries again. What if you could work the rest of your life again? What is the return on investment? Those are the pieces that you really have to put in there to understand the cost is what is the value? What is the return on investment? This is why I created the five pillars training so you can understand what are all the pieces that logistics that I need to consider? What is the cost? What is the return on investment? What is the value? I lay it out completely. No smoke and mirrors in the five pillars. Who wants the five pillars training? Put it in there so you can learn the exact um, factors that are involved on price versus cost, value versus return. Uh, what is your return on investment? Go ahead and watch that. It's detailed completely. No smoke and mirrors at all.
Okay. Very good. Another question about the program. Kimberly wants to know, can mm -hmm. we do food mapping and hormone testing without doing the full program? Can you separate them? Yeah. So uh, the answer is the hormone piece can be separated. Okay. We actually do have a program called My Hormone Masterclass. And My Hormone Class is just the hormone piece. And I, you know, it was a lot of people wanted to separate one, one or two of the pillars out. And I, I was able to separate the hormone piece out. And we created a program called My Hormone Masterclass. In My Hormone Masterclass, you get testing. So I have a hormone testing shipped out to you. There are modules, video modules, training you on all the different patterns that's feeding all these symptoms and autoimmunity. And then finally, there's a one-on-one -on -one consult at the end to verify and validate your results and your action plan. So that's My Hormone Masterclass. And if you're interested in My Hormone Masterclass, put that in chat and we can get that information to you. There's also a website, My Hormone Masterclass. Go ahead and check that out. Uh, and all the information is there. Frequently asked questions are there as well. However, food mapping will never be separated from the entire program. And I can, I, I mean, and this is something we could have even asked the alumni. If you think about all the training throughout the entire program around food mapping, food mapping isn't just about a test. Yeah, there's some testing and data involved, but think about the digestion issues involved. Think about all the foods that a uh, couple or all the foods that have to be removed and the support that you got, all the reintroduction support that needs to happen, all the understanding around what's the role of infection, what's the role of liver, what's the role of the large intestinal bacteria. There are like literally hundreds of pieces of involved in food mapping that's linked to all the other pillars of the program. And I'm going to ask alumni right now, do you think that food mapping could have been done alone by itself without any of the other pillars and would you have been successful? Alumni, you answer that question. <laughs> because so, you're right. they are chiming in saying this program altogether is really worth every penny. Um, could not, uh, it got to a point where I couldn't not afford it. That was getting back to the cost. Well, think so about it. How many people have lost their jobs or can't work because of their health? What if, not what if, I mean, we have hundreds of alumni who've been able to go back to work for the rest of their lives. What's the value of that, right? right. Um, it's really to think about that. Food mapping is important, but it alone won't solve all your autoimmune issues. Hashtag alumni. Well, the, the issue is because it's linked with all these other pillars. How can think about this? How can you do food mapping without digestion? How can you do food mapping without liver and hormone module? Think about that, guys. What about uh, food mapping without all the lab and thyroid modules? Guys, think about that. Think about that a little bit, right? <laughs> No, no, and hell no. People are saying, but no, 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 and no. So. <laughs> but that's being honest. Like, I will not compromise the success of the clients that we work with by saying, oh, yeah, let's sell a couple thousand food mapping tests. Right. That's not what this is about. And I would make a hell of a lot of money doing that. This isn't about that. This is about what your results are and what I am doing when I commit to you to get you those results is it's integral to all the other pillars. That's a promise. Perfect. Yeah. Now, you've touched on this a little bit when talking about digestion and food mapping, but just Emily from YouTube, and thank you to everybody watching us on YouTube tonight, um, wants to know, why do you say digestion matters so much for autoimmunity? Okay, so I kind of dug into a little bit, but I'm going to tell you guys right now is that digestion matters a lot, first of all, uh, because 90% of people with autoimmune disease, there's multiple steps in digestion, but people with autoimmune disease, just the first step with low stomach acid, 90% of people with autoimmune disease have low stomach acid. Low stomach acid alone, that one problem alone will impact upon multiple vitamins that are crucial for autoimmunity, okay, to calm autoimmunity. So therefore, if you fix that digestion, automatically that's a root cause. You're addressing like 20, 30, 40 vitamins and minerals that needs to be absorbed. You're also addressing a lot of why, does, why doesn't the bacteria in your gut grow properly? Well, mm -hmm. if you're not digesting your food, how could you? You're not feeding them broken down nutrients that they need that they work on, that they ferment on. So digestion is really crucial. And the most important thing I think for people with autoimmune disease and no one, by the way, no one is addressing digestion. Mm -hmm. No one in the functional medicine world with autoimmunity is addressing digestion. And, and it's, it's very critical. I know. And it's a really simple fix in a way. If you don't understand any of the concepts, you don't have any of the trainings, just get digested. Take one with small meals, two with big meals is part of our GI essentials. That in itself is a game changer. And I've seen a lot of comments here of people who aren't in our program who've used digested and they have had amazing results from it. 
think about that, everybody. So it's crucial. And digestion also will break down the food and also the allergenic particles of food to decrease the allergic reactions. So all you people with food issues, IBS, with mast cell disorder, histamine intolerance, uh, you don't realize is this high histamine load is coming from poor digestion of your food. So why not, <clears throat> why not fix what's coming in first? Right. Okay. All right. Boom. Boom. So many questions out. Yeah, she needs some water probably. All right, let's go back to a couple of the questions that are just being submitted. Don't want to forget about Sonia who wants to know, is it safe to eat curcumin if I had kidney stones in the past? Uh, say this again, sorry. Is it safe supplement question really? She's had kidney stones. Is there anything that would prevent her from taking curcumin? Yeah, um, not necessarily. So uh, uh, by the way, a lot of times people have dig uh, kidney stone problems because they have digestion problems, just FYI. Okay. <laughs> FYI. Um, I can't advise specifically on this person, but I can say that taking curcumin in itself doesn't necessarily increase risk of kidney stones. Okay. All right. Um, somebody else wants to know, why is my hair still dry, falling out, not growing when my thyroid levels um, are in range? I love this question because we've actually done a ton of interviews. We have case studies of people who've turned their hair loss around or her quality changes around. We also have a hair loss um, uh, protocol, actually, a hair loss uh, checklist and a protocol. So if you're interested in that, put that in chat and we can get that to you because hair loss is multifactorial. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, too, is the assumption that Amber thinks that her thyroid levels are fine is probably already wrong. Mm. I can tell you this right now. And I already mentioned this in multiple things, uh, multiple trainings I've done. The levels of the thyroid labs that you're getting is utterly asinine. They're not what is optimal for humans. <laughs> I'm just going to say that right there. So I, number one, I truly doubt those levels are in range, okay. like functional range, optimal range, number one. But number two, there are many other factors that play into it, including if you have poor digestion and you're not absorbing calcium, magnesium, zinc, other vital mineral, minerals, um, iron. Do you know iron's needed for hair growth? So how many of you with autoimmune disease out there have low iron? Do you know what the number one cause of the low iron is? Poor digestion and low stomach acid. Hmm. So it all is going back to digestion. <laughs> so this is why, why does digestion freaking, freaking matters? Because it really does. Um, so there's a lot of vitamin and minerals involved with that. And then there's hormonals. I mean, hormone is a huge pillar of our program. So then that's why for me, I'm like, for God's sake, like realize that really high levels or low levels of certain hormones will completely change your hair quality or quantity. So that's why hormone balance is so important. It ain't just about the thyroid. Your thyroid freaking works with your ovaries, your adrenals. So it doesn't work alone. That's yeah. why hormone mastery is key. Okay. Another question that's being submitted now, uh, growing up Jamaican asks, I have antiphospholipid syndrome. Will I ever get off blood thinners? I don't know. Will you ever treat the root cause of your autoimmunity? There you go. <laughs> I mean, this is a thing. Is like off of them, though. But yeah, people do this all the time. They ask me, I'm on, I have rheumatoid arthritis and I'm on prednisone. Can I get off of it? Well, if you address the root causes, that's your only and most important step. If you don't, if you don't really interrupt that pattern, what's feeding the autoimmune disease, how the hell do you have a chance to actually get off any of these medications, right? So no one can answer that. You can answer that because are you going to be able to identify mm -hmm. and stop what's causing that problem? That's your only chance in hell. Otherwise, no. Yeah, you will be stuck on these medications for life. That's the problem. Nobody wants that. Okay. Let's well, go I mean, if it works, it works. I'm not against medication, everybody, but that's not the only or first tool. And people are dependent on that because they, their doctors and them in, as a result don't understand the hundreds of other tools that I have. Right. So we help people lower the dose of the medication or get off medication all the time, but only if it's the right decision, they've actually lowered and stopped the root causes and they're working with their doctor to do so. This happens all the time. Yeah, I know we had a couple other questions, which we'll get to about taking medications. So sure. I'm um, pre submitted question now from Anita. Anita asking, if all my labs are negative, mm -hmm. why do doctors still say I have lupus? Oh, that's an easy question to answer. Um, so do you guys know that we have less than, in my estimation, less than probably 5% of autoimmune diseases have blood tests? Okay, so I'm going to use, I use the thyroid um, as, a, as an example. In the thyroid alone, there's 6,000 targets of autoimmune attack. We have less than like, we have a, like the most common tests available. There's just three targets that we could test for. So then just because you're negative for those three, does that mean you don't have autoimmune disease of the thyroid? No, it just means that we don't have the testing available 
to show that you have an autoimmune attack against the thyroid. Plenty of people low thyroid. Did you guys know that probably, depending on the study, anywhere from 50 to 80% of people low thyroid actually have autoimmune disease of the thyroid. But either the antibodies have never been tested, those three tests, or they're negative. But that still doesn't mean they don't have it. Do you guys see that? Mm -hmm. And so there's multiple kinds of lupus, let's say, only a couple kinds of which we have a blood test for. So there's tons of targets that can be called that can be related with the symptoms that we call lupus that we don't even have a blood test to diagnose yet. Same with rheumatoid arthritis. We have, everybody, you, people used to think, oh, unless I have a positive rheumatoid arthritis factor, it's a, it's a rheumatoid arthritis. Do you know we have now what's called zero negative rheumatoid arthritis? Meaning that there are other targets that are positive that we don't have the blood test for yet, but they still have all the symptoms, all the results of rheumatoid arthritis. So now rheumatologists are calling it zero negative rheumatoid arthritis. So this goes to the point where I don't care if you don't have a diagnosis. If it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a freaking duck. Stop the duck. <laughs> Stop the duck. Okay. Stop you heard the duck. Come on. <laughs> well, right. even know we're the duck. It's just a duck. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Another lupus question. Barb wants to know lupus fatigue and knee pain. Can the program help? So again, lupus and, uh, and lupus with knee pain. Can the program help? Mm -hmm. The answer is yes, yes. And hell yes. And I'm going <laughs> to, I can already tell you right now, this reminds me actually Kim Larkin. Uh, Kim is a, a teacher who went through our program a couple years ago and she had exactly this kind of syndrome where she had so much fatigue and pain. She wasn't able to travel up. Oh, there's uh -huh. Kim. She okay. wasn't able to travel. Uh, and her teachers would know her kids would all know the L word because it was the reason she was like struggling in class with teaching and all that stuff. And literally a couple months later, she was sharing that she was traveling Europe <laughs> and she had a whole group on Facebook that was detailing and tracking her travels through, through Europe. Um, and she said uh, she even got a promotion to a totally different job um, in the school district, more money, uh, you know, a promotion. And the people in her colleagues no longer even knew the L word anymore because you know what? She didn't have the fatigue. She didn't have the pain. So the thing is, don't take my word for it. I don't know who posted the question that I can help with fatigue or pain or lupus. We literally, guys, have hundreds of case studies of every diagnosis, every symptom known to man with autoimmunity. Believe mm -hmm. pe real people with real results. Don't take my word for it. If you want to have, um, if you want to find some of these case studies, type your symptoms or your diagnosis there and put case studies next to it. And our team will get to you. Check your message request later today or tomorrow. Our team will get to you and point you to the studies. We literally have hundreds of these case studies on YouTube. I have published. I've published hundreds of case study videos on YouTube and on Facebook of real people with their real results. That was Barb who asked the question. So thank you for that. Thanks, Barb. Barb. Yes, absolutely. I can help Barb. And in fact, I mean, when you think about lupus with fatigue and pain, let's say in the knee, on a scale of 0 to 10, 10 being the hardest problem I deal with, I think about that. I think that's, I don't know any of the other symptoms, but that alone, what you told me would be like level two or three problem for me to solve. You got it. You got it. You say you yeah. eat this for breakfast. I do eat. It's an easy problem to solve. Okay. Good to know. And yeah, if anybody is dealing with pain or if you have a diagnosis, let us know what it is so that our team can connect with you. And like, this is Irene over there on YouTube. Irene, thank you for watching on YouTube. And she's currently in our program. And Irene, I would love for you to share with everybody what you've struggled with. And you're just middle of our program. Share with people what your results have been so far. And this is, uh, and I don't, uh, if she's, well, she wants to share that, I'd love for Irene to share more about what diagnosis or symptoms she's struggling with and her results. Thanks, Irene. Okay, awesome. Meantime, pre-submitted question here from Jill. She says, how do I effectively try to explain to well-meaning but pushy relatives that I don't just need a knee replacement to walk again, that I am trying to heal naturally? It's like hugging a rock and wishing it would cut you, hug you back. <laughs> I tell people this all the time. Like, first of all, I don't, get, I don't care what a rock thinks in a way because they don't have the answers I need. Right? right. A rock is never going to hug me. But so many of us with autoimmune disease are pleasers. And because of our pleaser personality, we want to please these people rather than really get real help for ourselves, which is why for me, the mindset work that we do in our program really is really important. I think this is about healthy boundaries for you. Why the heck do you care what they think? Why do you have to explain yourself to them? You don't owe them anything. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, 
I think finding your tribe is really important, right? This is where I think finding good mentors is really important. So instead of going to your relatives, trying to explain, trying to ask them for help or explain yourself, why not just talk to people who get you? who actually have real answers and real solutions. And you're in a community of people where they can support you as you're going through the healing process. Who needs naysayers or people who don't believe us or who question us or who give us bad advice? We don't need more of that. Yeah. Alumni Margaret saying, cut them out. It's absolutely, it's not helpful to your healing journey to have those people in your life um, necessarily. Now, granted, they might be somebody important in your life. And in which case, maybe you just don't talk to them about this kind of thing. Well, and I think that's interesting that you were just um, she was pulling up some of these alumni interviews and that and I, I bet you it was Brooke sharing a win. So in our program, people are often sharing their wins. Mm -hmm. And one of the ones that was really common for people to share is to say, I had some healthy boundaries around, around my relatives. I was able to go to their house for dinner and, and I brought a dish that was gluten free or we had a communication about my food sensitivities and theirs. And mm -hmm. it was great. Like I, I teach people how to like it's not just about like boundaries of who not to talk to, but it's also about who you can talk to and how to invite wow. them to help. Like a lot of times I, people are so afraid to talk to their relatives about just like, I have, I can't eat gluten or I can't eat dairy. And I'm like, why don't you tell people what you need so then they can actually offer to help people. Mm -hmm. are, that's the, one of the wins the alumni talk about all the time. I'm so surprised at how many people do come out and help, but that also means know your people. Mm -hmm. Like you don't talk to everybody the same. You don't go to a rock and ask them to hug you. You go to somebody who's hugged you before and you say, I need a hug. Right. Mm -hmm. So talk to the right people for the right solutions is really important and know your tribe. Yeah, and, and an alumni saying, love our alumni group. It's so supportive. You do get a lot of that support, not just from you and not just from the others uh, who work for the Transform program, but also from your fellow alumni going through it and the people in the program going through it. Yeah. Uh, Margaret um, just talked about how cut them out. Like, and, and I mean, and that's true. Like if you, there's somebody that you're explaining to themselves to, I mean, I remember times when I was not believed and my mm -hmm. symptoms were not believed by my own doctors and my own family. That is that, a hard feeling because that's then a heartbreaking feeling. And so for me, if that's happening for you in your life, I mean, comment on it. I mean, because this is really a real experience for a lot of people with autoimmune disease, and I experienced it myself. But I had to learn very quickly. Yes, there are people I had to cut out my life, but there are people that I'm going to want to learn to invite into my life. So find some good mentors, find groups like this, and join. Like like in our program, the level of support from people going through the program is just crazy immense. But that's how people become successful. You don't get successful in turning around your health by pleasing people around you. Period. Okay. Another pre-submitted question now from Sonia wanting to know since the pancreas is also a hormone making organ and it helps control blood sugar levels, does pancreatitis also have an autoimmune component to it? Sonia, yes, yes, yes. And hell yes. When are we in a chicken dinner? You're so smart. Um, <laughs> so many of these pancreatitis problems. And by the way, diabetes is an autoimmune disorder of your pancreas. So uh, pancreas is a hormone making organ and is frequently a target of autoimmune attack. It's called diabetes. It's called pancreatitis. It's called blood sugar instability, high and low blood sugar people. So I can tell you that based on my experience, the reason blood sugar is a major pillar in our program is my own understanding uh, with my own experience with being gestational diabetes and diabetes in my family and treating tons of diabetic patients, treating tons of PCOS patients who are pre-diabetic, that this is a huge hidden autoimmune epidemic of autoimmune attack against the pancreas mm. disguised as blood sugar problems that people don't realize is an autoimmune disease. Okay. Right. Yep. Yeah. So and pancreas is a huge or hormone making organ. And that's why hormone mastery must involve the pancreas too. It's not just your ovaries. It's not just your adrenals. It's also your thyroid and it's also your pancreas. That's really great. And if you have diabetes or if you are struggling with blood sugar issues, let us know in the chat. We'd love to hear about that. Um, okay. A question now from Julie uh, asking about her mom. She says her mom has something called glomerulo. I can never say it. Glomerulonephritis. Say it for me now. <laughs> glomerulonephritis. 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 Exactly. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that was, that was uh, a plus that's, that's autoimmune attack against the tubules in your glomeruli which is which is the inside tubes around your kidneys 
Okay. So it's well, not she, immune attack, yes. And she says her mom is on dialysis and she knows this can be, like you said, an autoimmune condition, wants to know if kidney damage can be reversed in the program. Yeah. So that's really, I think to me, this is what I call kind of like an autoimmune timeline question, which mm -hmm. is that to me, like you can start here, but over time you're going to decline with more and more and more permanent damage. Right. So there's, there's, there's a timeline that it goes on. And I did a training, thank you, um, called autoimmune timeline training where I discussed this line number three, nine, number four, those are the actual timelines. What happens with autoimmune disease period. Uh, even if you take all these pills, um, all this stuff, that's just the, what doctors, expect. But here's the thing is, is that uh, I think what you want to do is you want to turn it around as soon as you can, because you don't want an organ damage. Mm -hmm. The more permanent an organ damage there is, those aren't reversible, right? The farther you fall down the line. And so, but at the same time, you don't know what is reversible, what, what isn't. I give you an example of someone with a stroke. Right when you have a stroke, you may not be able to move the whole left side of your body. You might be limp. You might not even be able to walk. But then six months later, eight months later, many people regain the ability to speak, to eat, to hold their hands, to walk again. Why? Because it wasn't all permanently dead. There was a lot of it that was reversible. This is the same with autoimmune disease, right? So here's the thing. If someone is at um, dialysis, that means that most, if not all, the kidney is dead. But the thing is, there's so much of a pendulum between this point to permanent end stage damage with uh, dialysis, right? So everybody is on that pendulum somewhere. And right now at this moment is the closest you're going to be to ideal. Because if you wait six months, it's even farther down. It's even farther to ideal. And if you wait six years, you're going to be down here. You will probably never get to ideal because of the level of permanent damage there is. The sooner you intervene with autoimmunity, the more important it is. And back to this person's mom, they may have end-stage renal disease, right, from autoimmunity. But what about their thyroid? The mm -hmm. thyroid may not be dead. What about the joint pain? They may not have end-stage uh, joint damage. That's reversible, but right? Those be the future targets of attack, right? They already are, attack, are targets of our autoimmune attack. So mm -hmm. a lot of times people will focus on that one organ and say, oh, well, I already am dialysis. Screw this. But then, oh, so then what? Next year she can get a knee replacement because she has end state damage on her knees when that it could have been reversible. Right. So don't lose the idea that autoimmunity isn't just one organ system. There's many hundreds of other targets of autoimmune attack. And many of that, most of that, all of that, if you intervene early enough, a lot of it can be reversible, right? But the, once it reaches end stage organ damage, those cells are never coming back. So you want to, this is the closest right now you will be to ideal. Don't wait for more and more dead cells. Yeah, that's really right. motivating. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Sassy wants to know, what are the main tools in the program to help heal? Lifestyle, supplements, mindset work. Is there any more, any less? Um, sounds like. So Miss Sassy, you need to watch the five pillars. First. Because I cannot even, I'm not going to take this whole next 90 minutes to go over that, but I have gone over that in the five pillars training. There are so many tools that you have no idea. Uh, it will blow your socks off. Um, so I would definitely, uh, who wants to know all the tools, type in five pillars training. Uh, and alumni can sit here and they can type in some of the uh, uh, tools uh, besides even, you know, I would love alumni chime in to say what are some of the most powerful tools they found during the program. In the meantime, those of you who want the five pillars training, just go ahead and put five pillars uh, in there and we'll get it to you. Okay, perfect. She also wanted to know, what are your thoughts on chelation for metal toxicity? Is it needed for healing? Uh, I call it another red herring. I actually have some ethical issues with some of the um, natural world doctors that focus on some of these spe specialties. So an example would be if you some some of the Lyme doctors that I've worked with, I've seen my patients go to, uh, everybody that goes to them has Lyme. That's not possible. Hmm. Okay. Um, that I see that a lot in the chelation therapy business where everybody that goes to a chelation therapy doc comes out with a ton of metals that need to be chelated with thousands and thousands of dollars of supplements or IV therapy that unfortunately for people with autoimmune disease, here's the problem. We have what's called compromised blood brain barrier because of the autoimmune attack against our brain a lot of times. So that barrier is really sensitive when you actually put chelation therapy through the veins, um, through the arteries that pulling of that metal from the brain out to the arteries can be very destructive for people with autoimmune disease. So many people do not do well with chelation therapy, but I have yet to seen a chelation doc that actually takes that into consideration. So for me, I current, I really tell people that really should be one of the last things you consider. There's so many other things that are key 
first. If that's something at the very end that, that you feel like you absolutely need, yeah, it would be one of the last things to consider. Um, that's just that's just not where the real problem is for a lot of people. There's an order to things. I would never address that as the first 10 steps. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go to some of the questions that are coming in live tonight now. Mm -hmm. uh, a while back, Verdell asked, confused about intermittent fasting and thyroid issues. What's the issue here? Yeah. So here's the thing is, you know, there's a lot of great literature around intermittent fasting and its health benefits. But note, that's on a healthy population. Mm -hmm. um, and trust me, this has been a hotly debated topic in the functional medicine world. And the, and I can tell you from my own personal experience, I tried it. Of course I did. I am, I'm not going to give you my advice without having done this myself and observed many patients through this, is that you really don't want to intermittent fast a sick person. And most people with autoimmunity are in a very fragile state. And the issue is too, people with autoimmunity have severe blood sugar issues that I already alluded to. So they tend to tolerate intermittent fasting or longer fasting extremely poorly. Okay. So that's just my experience. There is a time and a place. If your uh, autoimmunity is doing extremely well, one or two years later, you're doing very well. Your blood sugar master is doing great. Hormones are really balanced and you want to try it. I'm all for it. But you cannot intermittent fast or fast a sick person. That's just really, for me, a bad idea. And trust me, I went through it. Okay. Yeah, you've been there. So eat your breakfast. Don't skip breakfast. <laughs> and, I, and there are alumni who came in fasting. And they came in because they're fasting and sick. Yeah. So I would love for some of the alumni to talk about what were some of the things they learned about how they had to change their eating habits that really impacted and got them autoimmune turnaround and results. Uh, I would love alumni to share that in chat. That'd be really awesome. Okay. Looking forward to it. And somebody else asking a live question here, Christine saying, for those of us on thyroid meds, do you manage those meds? How would you handle a family doc that declines to change his approach? That's a great question, Christine, because we actually teach people how to understand their labs accurately and what the root causes that's triggering those lab abnormalities. We teach about supplementation. We teach about medication adjustment. We also teach you how to have collaborative conversations with doctors. So one of the key points that people learn in this program is how to find your tribe, even with your doctors. So mm -hmm. you learn who to hire and who to fire. We teach you how to have the conversations to get what you need through. And we also have these conversations to let people and doctors show you who they are. So you can either uh, decide to continue to work with them or move on and say next. So those are really important skills on, uh, I would say, self-advocacy that's taught nowhere else that we teach in the program. And I love alumni to actually share some of their experiences with that. After they've gone through the program, how has that changed their conversation and, and their narrative with doctors? How powerful are they in managing, co-managing their medication choices, whether it's thyroid or not, right? Wendy says, find a new doc. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, Wendy. Hi, Las Vegas. <laughs> uh, okay, wonderful. All right, let's go back to a pre-submitted question now from Melissa, who's asking about what we alluded to earlier, um, drugs. Is it safe to take autoimmune suppressant drugs? Do you think there's another form of treatment? Well, the answer is yes is in hell yes. And I think we already alluded to this, is that of course there's other forms of treatment. Unfortunately, People go into their doctor's office, rheumatologists or whoever they're just treating their autoimmunity, thinking that they're going to get the whole menu of every single treatment option. What they don't know is they're getting three items. It's literally the John Belushi skit where it's like cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. I would like a, I would like a diet coke cheeseburger. You know, I mean, <laughs> when you go into your conventional doctor, they're only trained to, to say, oh, you have rheumatoid arthritis at this stage, this med or this med. If that med fails, that med. That's their only option that you get. They know zilch about lifestyle. They know zilch about food or gluten. They know zilch about supplementation. They know zilch about movement because they have no training in it. Their entire training is encompassing on what medicine or procedure to give you. And that's it. That's it. So of course there are hundreds of other options. That's why I'm alive. That's why I'm here is because I learned all those options for me. If I only took the options my doctors gave me, I'd be dead by now. Wow. And that's not an option. That's no. not an option. This is how this program was born. I didn't want to be dead with all the drugs that I was taught to just prescribe as the only option. Now, that being said, do you think it's safe to take autoimmune drugs? It isn't safe to take autoimmune drugs. I'm going to tell you that because it has known side effects. Okay, but it's also not safe to have autoimmune disease out of control. 
So what that means is, is that there's a price to be paid no matter what the intervention is. If you don't do anything, there's a price. If you take drugs, there's a price because the, these drugs have life-threatening side effects. They're there to shut down parts of your immune system, which puts you at much higher risk for what? Life-threatening infection and cancer. Mm. So is it, I, nobody, including drug companies themselves, are going to tell you that it's safe to take these drugs. But you have to weigh risk versus benefits. And the other thing is those aren't just the only tool. If you want to learn how drugs and cancer are linked and what to do about it instead, I did a video training on five signs you, um, to, that knows that you're at higher risk for cancer when you have autoimmunity and what to do about it instead. So if you want that training, go ahead and type it in chat. We have that training that I did around cancer and drugs. And I talked quite a bit in that training about immunosuppressant drugs. I'm not against drugs. There's a time and there's a place. It just shouldn't be your first and only tool. If anyone out there is worried about immune suppressing drugs, or maybe you've taken them in the past, or you have talked to a doctor who has highly encouraged you to do so, let us know in the chat. We definitely would want to hear from you. This person saying most docs only know meds and procedures. Unfortunately, uh, doctors aren't trained to get to the root of the problem. However, <laughs> Dr. Well, Matt knows. You know what it is, Michelle, is that I am a doctor. I went through my first 10 years as a family medicine doc, and I went through the first 10 years telling all of you there was nothing else but drugs and procedures. I mean, that perhaps is the hardest part and probably my biggest shame. It wasn't until I got sick and my own life was at stake that I sought out and learned all this other stuff I never was taught. So I wish I had been trained how to do that, but I never was until I got sick. So I'm one of those doctors that were very well trained that was telling people, oh, supplements, they don't really matter. There's no studies around it. That's not true, by the way. Uh, you know, diet doesn't matter. There's no studies around it. I didn't even look at the studies. That's just what I, we were taught to tell you. It's utter crap. And I said that stuff because I didn't even, I never looked at the literature. I was just all my colleagues and that's what I was taught to say. And it's not true. Okay. So yeah. But I hope you don't beat yourself up, Dr. Maggie, because you worked hard to know better and then you did better. Mm -hmm. and you're doing it now. I know she's getting hot about it because you know, it's, it means a lot to you because you do think about all of the patients that you've treated over your lifetime and that you have um, learned. And it's all of your cumulative learning that has brought us to this point that you now have this knowledge base to where you know you have all of the tools, you have the pillars, and you know how to help people in a successful way. You know, I'd love to have Angela's comment come back because it hits home for me really big on Angela's comment um, because she's, I think her comment said about her mom, yes, I which, was that, yeah. which was that she said, I wish it, I would have found this program sooner. And maybe my mom might be alive today with the information that I have been taught in this program. Oh, Angie, thank you. I mean, that's what started this program for me is the pain of losing my mom to a mystery illness, right? Hmm. So I love that when you, my Angelou has a quote, which is when you know better, you do better. Don't fault yourself for not knowing better, but don't you dare. You've watched this video now. You've watched tons of my videos. Now you know better. I want you to do better. And doing better not only influences you, it can influence your, the generation above you and your children. So I can tell you how many alumni I'm going to ask here. You came to this program thinking you're going to help yourself. But what you realize now is that you've helped your kids or, the, or your parents or people around you. What has been the impact on the generation above and below you? I would love alumni to actually talk more about that. Um, Margaret says, agreed, Angela Ross. My dad would still be alive too. Oh, yeah. I know. Uh, and I, I, don't want, I don't want anybody saying that I, my kid would have been alive had I, done, had I intervened earlier, right? Know better, do better. So grateful. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. And Dr. Maggie, your mom uh, is making an impact still on, on all of us because um, her legacy lives on through you. So um, we all have a lot to be thankful for, for your mom's struggle. As you've said, she was, um, you can either be what, an example or a warning. Yeah. Right. And unfortunately, um, my mom, as far as her health was concerned, was a warning for me. Right. I don't want to die at 63. I don't. I don't want that to happen to my kids, right? So that drove me. But for me, with my kids, I was a warning for them maybe 10 years ago, right? But now I'm an example for them. Yeah. On my watch, on their watch, I, I know that to the best of my ability, they're not going to suffer the same fate as my mom 
or the first 10 years of my life when I had um, the first 10 years of not knowing I was dealing with autoimmune issues. So we can become a huge generation game changer for our children and for our parents too. Yeah. And we're getting a lot of those questions. I'm starting to help my little sister now that I'm in the program. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Thank Uh, you. Help my kid, helped all my kids, myself and my sister. It worked for me and my daughter. I am taking charge of my family. Thank you, Dr. Maggie. So, and, this- I, and I just recently, yesterday, spoke with uh, an alumni, Jen and her husband, Matt, and they have helped their kids diagnose um, and um, deal with problems preemptively. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a lot of genetic stuff that they discovered about their kids. Um, and, you know, it was just really amazing to see Jen not only impact herself, but it's impacting her husband's health. And now they're both on board and their little ones, I think one is nine and one is six. And <laughs> I'm, I'm visiting Sacramento uh, uh, in about 10 days and I'm going to meet these kids for the, for the first time in person because they've seen me virtually. But they haven't. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? Oh, I love it. I, I love seeing this next generation. They're like, hi, Dr. Maggie. I'm like, hey, kids. <laughs> I can't wait to meet them in person when I'm in Sacramento next weekend. Awesome. Awesome. Listen, we're getting so many questions submitted live. So here's what we're going to do. We have a couple more that we want to get through that were pre-submitted. We certainly want to get to those. And then if we have time, we'll come back and answer as many more as we have time for. Does that sound uh, like- Before we do that, I'm just going to let you guys know there's going to be a drawing. Um, Stacia is preparing all the of you that have entered a question into the drawing for the gift, $50 gift card to the, um, to the supplement store. So we're going to be doing a drawing in about two minutes, just so you guys know. Okay. Two minutes. So let's ask a couple more questions then. Oh, Jen. Yeah. That's Jen. That's me. Maggie's right. She's helping us all. <laughs> See, I'm not making this up. Thank you, Jen. It's a real people. <laughs> I can't wait to meet you guys in person, Jen, in Sacramento next weekend. Awesome. Okay. You touched on this a little bit about now is the closest you're ever going to be to healing. But Susie asked, when is the best time to intervene in my autoimmunity? Is it ever too early or too late? So it's autoimmune timeline. I think I've answered this question. Mm-hmm. I'd love for you to go back to know that right now is the closest you're going to be to ideal. It's only going to, you're only going to deteriorate more and it's going to get you farther and farther to reach up there to ideal. So the sooner and earlier you intervene, the cheaper, <laughs> the easier, and the more permanent the outcomes are going to be. So don't wait is all I'm saying. No matter what, I don't care if you work with me or not, intervene sooner rather than later, period. Right now is the closest you're going to be to ideal period. And somewhat along those lines, Jane also wanted to know, am I too old to turn around autoimmunity? That's bull. (laughs) No, you're not too old. And think about how long we live now. I mean, we are living into, uh, I want to live well into my eighties and nineties. I'm 52 right now. I have another 30, 40 years ahead of me. You know, that's like who, I mean, you know what? You're never too old. I can tell you right now, Anna in our program did our program about three years ago. She was 85 years old and she couldn't, she couldn't pick up her grandkids. She was like bedridden with RA pain. Um, and she did the program by the end of the program, she had, was holding up her grandkids and sweeping and all that. And that's Anna. And I think they were from Texas. So, I mean, I'm just telling you so far, our oldest participant so far has been 85 years old and had amazing results. It sounds like, yes. Okay. Uh, are you ever too old to feel better? That's my question for you. Ever. Ooh. Mic drop. <laughs> okay. A question from Instagram. Karis Fern wants to know, is fasting for longer than 24 hours okay with people with Hashimoto's insulin? I think we answered that, Anne. Yeah. The yeah. Fasting question next. And, and then Instagram, another one. Cause of chronic fatigue syndrome. What is the cause of chronic fatigue syndrome? There's literally about a thousand different causes just on autoimmunity alone. But I can tell you right now is that uh, digestion is going to be the number one cause, believe it or not, because you're not absorbing the vitamin minerals or digesting your food properly in the first place. Poor digestion is the number one cause to be, believe it or not, that nobody is talking about. This is why to me, digest is really key. Digesting your vitamins and nutrients is really important. And there are, I mean, hundreds of other things I've done tons. I have actually done trainings around fatigue. I would say that 80% of our case studies of people who've gotten better have fatigue as one of their major symptoms. So to me, the quickest symptom we actually turn around our program is fatigue because think about it. Dehydration is another number one cause of fatigue. Uh, digestion is vitamin deficiencies, thyroid hormones, you name it. So, and any autoimmune disorder. So there's literally thousands of causes, but the thing is, the five pillars root cause approach addresses them all. How many alumni of fatigue has turned it around and how quickly did it take you to turn around? Type it in the chat right now. Okay. I love it. We definitely do have some questions still lingering out there from the live, but we can uh, answer some of those or we could do the live drawing at this point, whatever you would prefer, Dr. Maggie. Rachel, let's pull you forward. Let's have you do the live drawing. 
Welcome everybody, Stacia. <laughs> so we have, I mean, I don't even know how many submissions we have. Um, you were busy in the back, I know, with entering all the names and numbers in there. So uh, we're going to do a drawing right now. All of you that submitted a question, each question qualified for a um, the drawing for our $50 gift card to our MYMD supplement store. I'm running the wheel and we have Barb Thompson Hornberger. So, Barb, you're the winner. Thank you for submitting your question. Our team will be in touch to get you the gift certificate. Congratulations. Thank you, Stacia. All right. We are at 503. Uh, what I would love to do is this. I would, I, I mean, it's, there are just so many questions here. I would love to know, did you guys enjoy this autoimmune table talk live where you get to do the questions? Uh, did you like office hours? If you loved office hours and you want this to be a monthly feature of autoimmune table talk, right? Voting for office hours. Um, <laughs> I can, we can do this once a month. If it's something that you guys really like or love, I would love to do more of that. Um, I love everybody's like, congrats, Barb. Congrats, Barb. I love it. Oh, wait, look at this. Michelle said, my fatigue improved in week two from YouTube. I love that. And people are saying they're really enjoying this. Love this. Please do it again. I got to tell you, we have so much interaction during this. Um, everybody's really enjoying, I think, getting the chance to visit you virtually in your office and have this time with you. Yeah. So for, if you guys want to learn more about our program, Transform Autoimmune, um, we're going to put a link in the chat for you to start a chat with our team. If there's any resources here that you wanted that you posted about, check your message request on Facebook or in YouTube, check your comments, um, reply to your comments later. Uh, we'll hook you up with those resources because we li literally, literally have tons of resources to share with you. Um, for people on Facebook under messenger, you have to look under message requests because we're, if we're not friends with you, it's under requests. So make sure you click up there and you'll see our messages. I'm betting all of you watching right now, you already have a message request from us at some point that you never saw. Um, so check it out. Um, and we have resources there. Um, we're also going to put a link in chat so you can um, start a chat with our team about anything. Um, I, and by the way, I want to thank all the alumni. There are literally hundreds of alumni who joined us on this office hours and I am loving seeing your faces, everybody, in your comments. Um, it's like an alumni reunion. I love this. Um, I love this. And, and people are uh, even voting for office hours who are alumni. I love this. Yeah, because um, alumni are saying even years later, they're learning something new by listening. Oh, I love that. Tell me one thing, alumni, that you learned new today. Uh, if you could type that in chat, I'd love to hear what you guys, one thing you learned new today from uh, office hours alumni. I'd love to hear that. Well, Dr. Maggie, you've been so generous with your time and answered so many questions. Just to close us out, what would you like to leave everybody with? One thought. I think that my Angelou uh, quote, which is when you know better, you do better. And I have said myself that my secret shame being a physician with um, before, a family physician before, was telling being, believing the, the limitations that I was taught that it was only medication and procedures that really heal people. That is, should be a choice, but should be one of the last choices. I think that there are hundreds of other tools that I've learned since. And now that I learn better, I know better, I do better. And so it is my mission. It is truly my mission to spread the message that there are hundreds of other tools for autoimmunity. You can turn this around. You can disrupt this pattern. I want to spread this message to a hundred I want to spread this message to a million people at least, and even this video. So what I'd love right now is anybody who's watching this right now, tag the name of somebody that you know that can benefit from this. Share this video on your timeline uh, and so that people can understand just how autoimmunity uh, weighs the public awareness that there's so many other things that you can do for autoimmunity that works. So if you can help me with that mission by sharing this to your timeline or tagging someone that you know could benefit from this, you rock and thank you for helping me out. All right, that's gonna do it for tonight. Thanks for joining us on Autoimmune Table Talk Live. We'll see you next time. Bye everybody.